Hello, I'm Abdullah, and I'm presenting Improving Doctors. Background. Doctors Oaks have been there since the beginning, from the ancient Greeks to the world to World War II till now. And this has been a problem because doctors have been way too much by the book and it deteriorates the doctor patient relationship. And you'll be hearing this word a lot throughout my presentation. What's the Hippocratic Oath? It was created by the ancient Greeks and it was there so then the patients can be protected. And the main idea of it is that doctors should be able to not should not be able to kill patients whatsoever, harm nor anything. And this has been updated for multiple years. The latest one is in 2017. If doctors do not follow this rule or oath, they will be heavily fined or put in jail. My still this material is Rosie the Rifter, and she was a World War II woman, and this is basically trying to get men to improve women's work ethics during that time. While addressed to National Labor Day, it, the main premise of that is improving American work ethics for all. Which leads to my research question, how have English doctors' work ethics changed in the approach of treating patients over the years? The first problem is that doctors have been prescribing medicine the way they feel like and not getting input from patients. This has been, this breaks the ethical rules and causes a poor doctor-patient doctor relationship. Edmonds is Dr. Barry Schultz when he was giving addictive opioids to his patient. One of them was a 50-year-old and he died because of them. He was sentenced for 125 years in prison and, and the prison was the Florida State Prison. And this is the, an example of why the Hippo doctors should uphold the Hippocratic Oath. Solutions is that doctors should treat patients as humans and not as test subjects. They should show some sympathy when treating patients. And this will all improve the doctor-patient relationships. Problem two is that doctors cannot kill their patients. This seems like a this seems like a solution, but it's a problem because doctors, patients who are in terminal illnesses like cancer, who want to just get over with and die, cannot because of the Hippocratic Oath. And this also deteriorates the patient-doctor-patient relationship. Evidence is, is in 1976, Karen Ann Quillen was in a permanent coma because she was drinking wine while in a crash diet and she was in she was in a permanent coma for 20 years until she died during that time the parents wanted the doctors to take off a respirator over here while the doctors cannot because of the hippocratic oath. the parents sued the doctors and the judge agreed with the parents so to make the parent to make the doctors feel better the judge said that if a group of doctors a group of your doctors say that she is in a permanent coma, you can't take the respirator off. She died 10 years afterwards in pneumo with pneumonia. And the solution to this is that doctors and patients or their, do or their parents should agree on a solution, compromise. While this, while, do while patients should understand the oaths and see what doctors can and cannot do. This will improve the laws, the, the relationship, and will decrease multiple tensions. Some limitations is that doctors have been, doctors are great in their job, but there are some bad patients that don't listen to them at all. For instance, um, let's say a doctor tells you to take this medicine every day, the patients won't listen and just say, I want this specific medicine, even though the doctors do not agree. So the patient, this is the scariest thing for doctors because they could get in trouble. So what they have to do is just take them out of the hospital and they can't return. My conclusion is that doctors have, the doctors' oaths have been there from the beginning, from World War II, ancient Greeks, or now. It's been changing and it's been protecting patients a lot. This has been able to make the doctor-patient relationship grow. And these are my books I
Thank you. We will now begin the oral defense portion of your presentation. I will ask you two questions and then we will be finished. So your first question is, what information did you need before you began your research and how did that shape your research? The information I needed was because there's lots of doctors in the world, so I need a specific amount. So when I say English doctors, I mean like the English speaking world, like America, Australia, or England. So I had to cut out a whole bunch of other regions, like South America or something like that, so that it can stay relevant. Okay, and your second question is, what advice would you have for other researchers who consider this topic? They have to look at both sides of the penny. They have to look at the limitations, which is bad patients, but they have to look at the solutions as well, which is um, doctors who follow by the rules but still compromise with the patients. Okay, thank you. That concludes your presentation.